I'm Shane Rose uh, from Bimbadeen Park or Newly Buller Equine. Uh, we have a pre-training and breaking in spelling business where we have two properties to spell horses and we break in <coughs> and pre-train here out of Bimbadeen Park. And then on top of that, we have a performance horse business where we uh, breed and buy and sell um, train eventers for Olympic Games and and anywhere in between. Um, no, I, no, it never was really something I thought about being a professional rider. I I wanted to be a professional rugby player, and I was a midget at school, and and just just as I was leaving school, I started getting smashed at rugby. So I thought I'd leave school and, and went to England and thought I'd give riding a go. I've always ridden my whole life and, and really enjoyed it. And then thought of maybe maybe it was something that I could you know, pursue and it was probably a good choice really. <laughs> probably not quite fast enough or strong enough or, or anything to be a rugby player, but, but um, you know, the eventing certainly been successful. Now I love a bit of golf. Um, Playing, not so much watching. Uh, I'm a mad sports fan. Any sort of sport, from netball through to rugby. I don't play. No, but I did one time, but that was bad. Uh, no, I I just love sport. Any sport at the top level is is great. A normal day in a, in the busier time. We sort of got two two periods of the year. We're, we're just heading into the busier time now. Sort of. Um, January through to June, um, we'll start. We always start at six, but uh, we start riding at seven, um, and we ride the breakers uh, or, or work with the breakers first. Um, and we would do that depending on how many are in. You know, sort of up to sixty or eighty breakers at a time when we're really busy. So that that takes most of the morning, sort of into the early afternoon. Um, uh, and then once they are done, uh, or during that, some of the, the other guys will, will work some of the pre-trainers. Um, and then once the, once the racehorses are finished, um, we try and find a bit of lunch and breakfast in between. Uh, we'll start the event horses in the afternoon. And then uh, we finish off, you know, cleaning up the yard and, and doing everything once the, the eventers are finished. So. It's a long day. We start, you know, doing boxes at six o'clock, feeding horses, and and you know, one person's feeding for probably half the day, really feeding, and and you run chips in with the boxes, and uh, it's a busy, busy environment. Um, but we're all, everyone here is is like-minded. Uh, we all want to be good at what we do. We all event. Pretty much everyone that works here, you know, has a, a, an ambition of some description in eventing. Um, whether it you know being the best groom in the world or, or being the best riders, um, uh, so we all work together and, and get things done and and yeah it's a really good environment we've got here. We're, we're very fortunate that um, you know we've got great staff and, and we all get on and get on with the job. So oh it's it's funny people think that's hard. Um, I think going to competition riding six or seven is a weekend off. Um, a three-day event's a piece of cake. You know, you've got three days to do it, or a week in most cases. Um, you know, so at home I, I would ride 30, 40 plus horses a day, including my eventers at the end of it. So um, to go away and, and ride six or seven horses in, in a weekend is, is really not difficult. And, and, and I, I guess through my business and, and what I do, I'm, I'm very good at, at shifting from task to task. So I can be concentrating on one job or one aspect and give it my full attention and then when I'm finished I can park that and move on to something else and 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 I find it really not that difficult <laughs> I know people might find it hard to believe but yeah riding six or seven at an event is is fine four or five is is really quite an easy weekend one day events I, I sort of know most of the tests, um, especially at the higher levels. Once you get into the star levels, the tests become a lot. There's only a couple of tests to choose from. So um, I just, before I get on the horse, I will read through the test. And then part of my routine on any horse is I try and remind myself to go through the test 
movement by movement two or three times before each test and be confident that I know where my next movement's going to be. Um, but obviously, you know, I'm not that smart, so sometimes I make mistakes. But yeah, just, just I concentrate on that, that test whilst I'm on that horse and I get off. And if it's the same test, great. If it's not, refocus, think about a new test. Um, the dressage is much, is, is definitely the most difficult um, to remember that because they're different movements and different levels and things like that. Whereas a show jumping around is, is pretty simple. You walk the course, you ride, there's 10 jumps, 12 jumps maybe, you know, it's, it's not difficult. Um, and then the, the cross country, we're fortunate that most of the venues we go to, we've been to. So we know the venue, we know gen, the general lay of where the course is going to go. Uh, so then we, we, I will potentially only walk, if I've got four or five classes, just once. Um, uh, if I haven't been to the venue, I'd definitely have to walk it a second time, but generally just once and walk the lines and know where the jumps are and then just be clear really clear when you get on the horse before you go cross country and some that a lot of us guys that ride more than one is when you get on that horse you talk to someone and you go through the course you know jump one is on the left jump two is on the right jump three is in the middle and what fences are what so that that you can then piece it together as one course not a, a, a you know a jumble of different courses and and yeah it's just just you get used to it once you've been doing it for a long time like I have uh, it'll, everything becomes easier and, and, and just adapt I guess I, I guess uh, Olympic Games World Championships um, you know, I'm very privileged to have been able to represent Australia I mean, five championships I think and um, hopefully six this year and um, uh, you know that's 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 a massive achievement. And then you know to be part of successful teams. You know I've been fortunate to to have a bronze and a silver medal so far, and hoping to add a gold one to that this year. And um, and you know just I, I guess that that being part of the Australian team is is an amazing achievement. And then hopefully with that become you know comes success. And and you know I, I guess I'm I'm pretty proud of what I've done within the sport off the horse as well. You know we've been able to you know, produce um, well, uh, you know, world-class events here in New South Wales that you know, will leave a legacy for, for not just me, but for, for the sport. And, and I mean, I'm, I'm quite selfish. I do this for myself. I, I do this so that, that um, you know, I have an event that I can go to in Australia and there are other people doing the same thing. But if, if I can contribute to that, that will make my success um, more easier for me to get my, the, the success I might be able to get and you know a few people can enjoy themselves on the way. Oh, Olympic Games uh, 2008 um, yeah yeah I guess um, it, it was a slightly different experience because we weren't we weren't over in in Beijing we we're in in Hong Kong but yeah I just uh, I think any time you represent Australia, I remember the first time in, as a 21-year-old going to New Zealand in the Young Rider team and then the year after in the Senior Young Rider team, no, sorry, Senior trans Tasman team, and they're a you know, great experience. And then obviously the Olympic Games is, is the ultimate, you know, the, the, the highest level you can get to. So yeah, it's a massive honour and, and um, I, I guess, you know, I, it, 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 it's, <clears throat> it makes it more special when you compare yourself to other athletes, uh, Stuart and myself um, were fortunate enough in Rio to walk at the front of the, um, the opening ceremony uh, when Australia came into the, to the Olympic Stadium. So, you know, it's, it's quite an amazing experience being recognised amongst, you know, athletes in different, in different sports within the country at an Olympic Games that, that you know, gives a, <laughs> a different experience to just representing Australia and eventing. Um, so, I mean, I guess that's the biggest difference in an Olympic Games is that anyone on the street understands what the Olympics mean. Whereas uh, if I go to a horse show and I say I went to the World Championships, everyone knows, but no one in the street knows sort of the fact that they're, they're similar sort of standard events. So, um, yeah, Olympic Games are pretty special. So the plans for this year are pretty simple. Um, I've got uh, four or five really lovely horses and 
obviously I'll start at the top with Virgil. Uh, he's, his plan will be to come in, he started work already. Uh, he's just preparing for Tokyo as if I'm going. Um, it's my plan. Hopefully the selectors have the same plan. Uh, he'll start, he'll do um, three probably short format events starting in Sydney in May. Um, uh, I have to confirm this, but that, that's my plan. Um, May, Sydney, uh, June, Werribee, and uh, there's, an event, there's a couple of choices in, in July, maybe Queensland three day event, or uh, there may be another one depending on quarantine. Um, requirements and um, so he's just preparing as if he's going w working on his dressage trying to always trying to get that better he's a, obviously a lovely jumping horse and um, so yeah just just preparing him for for a, a gold medal shot in Tokyo uh, I've got a really lovely young horse uh, easy turn who uh, she won uh, Wallaby Hill four star at the end of, of 2019 so she's going to prepare for Tokyo um, as a backup for Virgil. She's very, very inexperienced, but she's very, very quality horse. And um, she's still got more to learn and needs to, she'll do a little more um, in the lead up uh, to, to, you know, when those selections are made. Um, she'll do a couple more short format events earlier in the year and then head to Sydney in the long format uh, in May. And hopefully she can win that and put some pressure on, on on everyone else but um, uh, and then all going well she'll either prepare for Tokyo as a backup for Virgil or, or if she's not quite in that mix um, she'll look at something later in the year and then we've got, got a, a nice bunch of younger horses um, uh, <coughs> I've got one that, that hopefully I'll get to Adelaide Firestar this year um, he was supposed to go in 2019 but just had a very badly cut mouth that hopefully we've got on top of um, so he's he's actually really improved this, this last few months so really looking forward to you know slow steps but, but getting to Adelaide with him and then a couple of uh, much greener horses I've got really nice German German gelding that we bought a couple of years ago and he's just going to consolidate at, at he's at uh, three star at the moment and um, he's just going to poke along with three stars and, and maybe look at a, a four star at the end of 2020 and and I've got a really lovely young thoroughbred that's um, he's only had one start yet so far but um, he's got a really cool brain and, and he's he's going to be a really nice horse going forward so we'll see where they go and and once I start to get a bit quieter at home I'll um, I'll steal a few of my young horses back and see where they're at. Uh, I've been very fortunate to have a very long relationship with Bates. Um, in 1996, I was on the Olympic squad for Atlanta, and, and uh, we were over in Atlanta, and I was talking to a, a friend over there who was uh, interested in, in potentially helping us get some sponsors and making our sport a little bit more financially viable for us. And he got a, a group of riders together and uh, pitched a Bates to sponsor a bunch of us. And so I was not back in the end of 96 and so uh, been a, a very lucky ambassador ever since. Yeah, I love the Bates Victrix. Uh, I think it's, it's the best jump saddle Bates have made. Um, obviously, I ride in it. <laughs> it's, uh, I, I think the thing that for me, uh, makes it really, really good to ride in is um, from the, the first time you sit in it, your lower leg doesn't move. And um, you're able to stay very, very stable in, in your lower leg position. I think, however, you've made the flats um, are perfect. <laughs> uh, and yeah, it, it just allay, and it enables you to be really balanced and, and strong in your position, which obviously going cross country and, and jumping helps. So um, yeah, love it, really good saddle. My first thought, it's a very good looking saddle. Um, uh, that was my first thought. And then when I sat in it, um, it's quite similar to, to a, a couple of different saddles that the Bates have got. Um, I really love the seat. Um, I've ride in the, uh, I've been riding the Nova for years. And I, I like the seat better than the Innova. My first 
um, the seat just feels very good. You can, you're, you're quite close to the horse and uh, certainly feel um, very much a part of the saddle. You're not sitting on top of it. Uh, and then you know, the, the thing that I, um, I really like the feel of, of the very narrow or slimline flaps that you can get your lower leg on the horse or your, your whole leg really. And the, the adjustability you, ha you have in the knee rolls um, really enables you to tailor the saddle pretty much for your, for your body shape. You know, people have different body shapes. If you've got a fixed block, it, it's very hard to squeeze into some of them. Um, and, and just being out a few mils, changing the, the positioning made a totally different uh, feeling in the saddle. So yeah, really, really looking forward to, to experiencing more time in it and um, see where we, where we come to. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think they're great. I, uh, uh, I mean, the, the good thing about them is is the air panel uh, and our, if there's a, a part of a saddle that is pressing on a horse, the air pocket distributes that weight evenly throughout the horse's back. Uh, you don't get pressure points. So yeah, I absolutely ride in it and love it. And, and the horses feel great and, and don't get sore, so. Bush. Night in. Both. Best. Cross country. Good ones. For dressage, jet tails. <laughs> Good horses. Oh, triple bars are fast, but yeah. Better feeling over an oxer. Apples or carrots? Carrots. <laughs>